So we have a departmental called store. This is Tesco. Oh, they sell corn, spinach, peas, raisins. This is just basic data entry. And in a week, weekly sales, this is Tesco weekly sales. So every week we sell 50 units of uh, 30 of uh, 40, 50. So to make this faster, I think it might be best to just use a spreadsheet that is already populated. So I would re let me let me use this. Can you see my screen? Yes. Sure. So let's assume this is Tesco, and these are their sales amounts in January, February, and March. For basic Excel, the first thing we're going to be looking at. Mm -hmm. The different work, so what we are looking at is a worksheet in Excel. We can create more worksheets. For instance, we want to duplicate this data. If you click on quarter one sales, if you right click on quarter one sales, all you need to do is move a copy, create a copy, and you want to create this copy, you want to either put it in a new worksheet or you want to put it in the same workbook. Let's move it to a new worksheet. So I'll say to book, new book, and OK. <coughs> and what it has done is it's created this, it moved the old worksheet to another workbook for me. We can copy this data. To copy this data, you want to copy January to another cell. All you need to do is click on it, go to the copy button, click on another cell, and paste it. This is very, very basic Excel, so I'm, I'm just going to run through it. Another way of copying is using a shortcut key. Sorry, can we mute our mic, please? Thank you. Another way of copying is we have a shortcut key for copying. You can click on the cell you want to copy. You want to copy cell B2, which is January. If you press Ctrl and C, it would copy. You can see that there's something moving around January. If you click on another cell and press Control V, that will test it there. You want to, if you want to use whatever you have copied in future, yeah. if you click on the clipboard, you can open the clipboard. The clipboard is where you have it stores whatever you have copied, and then you can click anywhere, click on the clipboard, and you have that data there. Another way of copying is if you right click on this January, you have the copy button, and then you can right click again, and then you have the paste button. So I'm just going to mute this button. So. So we're looking at this data. That's, this is just this is our test code field. One other thing we can do again with this data is we can highlight. 
So you want to you want to you want to make your data you know nice and and neat. You can highlight this and color it. You can you can put any color. You can use any color to make this nice. You can change the, change the lettering. You have all these buttons here to basically change different things on your spreadsheet. So you can use this to change the lettering. You can So you can change lettering, like here, we can change that to Algerian, and you can see a preview here of what it will look like, even before you pick it. You can make it regular, you can change the font size, and when we pick all that, Okay, my, my screen is freezing. Okay. So I'm just gonna change lettering. Oh, you can also use the shortcut buttons here. You can make it you can change it to italic, you can underline it. You can you can change the format of this. If you notice this is this has a pound sign. You can change it to you can remove the pound sign, and all you have to do is go to this button here, go to number. It's got the pound sign because it's got the currency, and you have the pound here. You can change it to ordinary number, and OK, and it takes off the pound sign. So these are just basic of editing in Excel. Huh? Yeah, there is. There is. Can you mute your mic, please? There is volume. Thank you. Okay. Ma, I'm coming. I'm just going to mute this. This is. Okay. I do not understand. <laughs> okay. So that's editing. So all this button here. We can use it to edit. Let me go back to our spreadsheet. I'm just going to close the clipboard. Okay. If I want to change this, if you remember just now, we took off the pound sign. We want to put the pound sign back on this. All I have to do is go to go to your button here. Go to number. Currency. This time around, we don't want pounds. We want uh, dollars, for instance. All we need to do is pick the right one. I'm going to take Canadian dollar, and then I'll change it to dollar. If we want to change another one, instead of going through that, there's another way of doing it. This part is here. It's called the format painter. What the format painter does is it will copy the format. If you select the cell and click the format painter, it will copy the format of that cell on any other cell we click on. So for instance, if you color this cell blue, and we click on the format painter and click anywhere else, it will change the format to the format we're copying from. So that's another great tool to use in Excel. And there's another tool. This is your undo button. 
So if you don't want to continue with what you've done, you can click undo and that will just undo everything that you've done. It would undo it instead. Another way of editing is we can put we can put borders on our table. If you click on the cell here, there's another function here called border. So we can choose to make the borders like this. We can choose the, choose the width of the border, and that's this. And it puts a grid line on it. We can also we can change the font to any font we want. And looking at this data, we, we, we actually, after formatting, we actually get to some calculations. So we'll do some calculations now. So we want to know what the sum of sales in Tesco is for the North region in the first quarter of the year. So if we click on the cell here, you can actually use any cell to put your formula. We can click on this auto sum button, and what it does is, if you click on auto sum, it selects any cell close to A. So you can choose any cell you want to sum, or you can leave it at that, and enter, and then you get, get a sum for January, February, and March. Another great function, so this is the total, total quarter one sales. We want, to, we want to sum for South, East, and West as well, but we don't want to type in the formula. You can just click. If you put your crystal here in this corner, once it changes to the solid plus sign, you can drag that down, and then what it does, it duplicates the formula and pulls it down. You can sum, you can sum for January as well, so all you need to do is click on your auto sum and then you can drag it down and this gives you the total sum so that's simple sum function and auto fill If we look at this formula here, okay, we want, we want just, for instance, if we want just north and south sales in January, we can actually create a formula. So if you put equal to, once you put an equal to sign, Excel expects you to put a formula in. You can click on any cell you want to sum, and all you need to do is put a plus sign and click on the next cell. And you can continue to do that for as many times as you like to get the sum. So here we're summing north and south, and that would be cell B3 and B4, which is these two cells. We want to sum for February. All you need to do is drag drag that across, and it copies the formula. And it, what it does, it automatically picks the cells here. One function you can use is, if you want to freeze cells in formulas on Excel, for instance, when I drag it, I still wanted to be adding north and south for January. Before I drag it, if you click on this formula here, then what you need to do is press F4. When you press F4, if you notice that there is a dollar sign in front of the B and in front of the 3, what it has done is it has frozen that cell. So wherever you drag that formula to, it would always pick that cell 
B3. So I'm going to drag that now. I'm going to show you the formula here, which is C3 and C4. With the new frozen B3, if I drag it across, you'll notice that B3, it will not move from B3 because they are frozen that cell. So when you are doing some calculations and you need to just have that cell, then that would be useful. If, for instance, the target cell is 50, is 5,000, in this case, it would be useful to have a frozen formula on 5,000 because you don't want it to move. So you want to know, for instance, the north for February, how far off is it from the target field? So that would be equal to C3 minus target field. And we're going to freeze that cell so it doesn't move. So in January, the cell for north, the difference between the cell for north and the target cell is 8,400. If I drag this down, it will continue to reference this cell because I've frozen it. For south, it's 9,050. For east, 7,120. Because all these formulas are still looking for, looking at this target cell. So that's the auto, that's using the auto sum and the auto fill function. Okay, I'm gonna take this off. Okay, so I have this data for sales. And we're going to be looking at other functions here, okay? If for any reason we want to insert a column in between this data, all we need to do is right click and insert, and then you have a column inserted. You want to delete that column, right click, delete. Andrew and Southwest, if for any, we want to join, you can join two columns together. So sales, sales person and region, I want to, like for instance, I want to create a, a heading for this, sales per region. You can join all these columns together, even the merge and center. And what it does is it joins all the cells together. I can make it bold. I can increase the font. I can color that. You can change this to a table. If you want to change it to a table, you have format as table here. So you can pick any table style here. Let's look at this. That's the data for our table. And then suddenly we have we have a table here. 
On the more on on subsequent lessons, we we'll look at creating pivot table, creating charts and ties for tables that we have. But for now, we just focus on the basic Excel and basic calculations in Excel. Thank you. Basic calculation is Excel. Let's look at the formulas. So on on the form on the tab, there's the tab called formulas. And here you have all the formulas that you can use in Excel. So for instance, we want for Andrews in Southwest, it sold 24 bytes, and it sells is 4,800. For sales, for, for this company, we want to find the total number of sales for this company. A simple formula we can use is you start with an equal to units multiplied by sales. Did you see what just happened? Because I've converted this table to a formula, there's this flash fill function that gets activated. I'm just going to undo this and do it again. Okay? So because this has been converted to a table, it will assume that that is what you want to do for everything, and it can actually save time. So if I put my formula here to multiply 24 by twenty four times the sales and I press enter. The flash fill function actually and the flash and it fills it up and makes it part of your table. So that's a simple formula. There are so there are many formulas you can use. If you don't want to type in the formula, I'm just going to undo this. You can actually pick the formula you want here. Let's do sum, for instance. So we want to sum. We want to add two things together. You can pick what you want to sum here. So I'm going to pick select the column E. And OK. And because of the table, it's already flash coded and it's put the sum for everything all the way down. I'm going to undo that. I don't want the sum all the way down. Okay. If you don't want the sum all the way down, you can actually click on this button and go to undo calculated column and you just give the one cell that you calculated there. And you can go back, you can stop you can stop it doing that if you don't want that function. And you can also use this to autocorrect. I'm just gonna undo undo that. Okay. There are also more functions to take from here. So you can have all these functions I would abstract is if if there's a no, if a number 
if you have negative numbers, I'm just going to change this to negative numbers. So you have negative numbers, and you want it, and you want to change it to positive. You can use the abstract function, and then you just click on the cell you want to change to positive, and enter, and then you have it as positive number. So I have this cells of data per region. So I have uh, different regions. I have Southwest, Atlantic, and Pacific. I'm just going to copy this and place on another shade. I only want to see my regions. So what I can do is, instead of deleting the duplicates one by one, I can select everything. I'll go to this button here, remove duplicates, click on it, OK. And then it told me it's removed 111 duplicates. So I only have this unique cell. Another way of doing that is I can we can use a pivot to do that, but we'll cover pivot in subsequent lessons. Or if we can, we can do pivots today. If you have anything in particular you want me to cover as part of basic, please let me know. Send a message and I'll cover it. Because I don't like So we cover the, if we want to delete, for instance, we want to delete rows, you can just select the rows you want to delete, right click, and delete, and that takes it off. Okay, let's go back to. Okay, so when we did that formula, the sum of this and this. This is a simple sum formula. I'm going to change this because of the table. I would change it to the cell reference itself, which is E3. If we want to edit this formula, if you click on the formula, you can see that it's picking these two cells. If you want to edit it and you want it to pick a different cell, all you have to do is go to that formula. When you have this plus sign, you can drag it to another cell. And you can drag this to another cell and enter. And suddenly it's picking, you know, two different cells. And then we can you can drop that down, then you start to pick you know different cells. Okay, I think we can actually do pivot tables today. Okay, so that's a pitch that's a copying. So I think I've covered a bit of the the basic. If you let me know if you want me to cover any other topic, if you just send a message. Okay. So I'm going to move a bit further on. and introduce our pivot tables. 
So we have this data for different sales. These are the items, these are the products, this is the sales person, this is the region. What I want to do is, I want to know at a glance, you know, how many bikes have been sold by Andrews in the Southwest. Before I go to put on tables, let me, let me, let me do sub totals. Mm -hmm. There is a formula, sub total, that will just sub total a part of the cell, a selected cell. Which is equal to subtotal. I'm actually going to let me open the function so we can see. Let me open the formula itself. When you, when you want to give a formula and you know the first part of the formula, if you type it on and then click on the function button, it brings up the function argument and you can actually use this if you don't want to type directly into the cell. So what I want is, I want to, I want to subtotal this and I want to use the sum function, which is 9. And what I want to sum Are these cells here? So things that you have to change it away from changes from the table. Actually. I want to change this from the table. So when you're using a table, then it takes away the cell reference. So what I've done is I've pasted this data on another worksheet. And I want to use the subtotal function. Subtotal is very versatile. If you look at this, once I type subtotal, it wants to know what you want to do. Do you want to do an average, or do you want to count? Or do you want to count unique cells, or you want the maximum or the minimum? This time around, I want a sum. So the first thing I will pick, you can either double click this, or just type in 9, comma, and then those are the cells I want to stop to, to close the bracket and enter. So the sum of this, all this is 6, 4, 5, 100. I'm just going to format this, so it has a, like a comma. Number, I want it to the number, and I want it to come on it. Okay. I'm not sure if I've talked about filters. You want to apply filters on a worksheet. Select the data where you want the row, where you want the filters to be. If you click on data and click on your filter, then apply filters to the data. To test that top to I'm going to highlight, I'm just going to highlight this. If, for instance, you want, you want to know the total sales of Andrews, if you click on your filter, on select everybody, select Andrews and OK. And this top total, what it does, it changes and only adds what it can see on the screen. So it takes away all the other ones and adds only the sales for Andrews. If you want the quantity for Andrew, it's 157. If you change Andrews to Benson, 
it would only add the sales to rent for benefit and the units. So you can use this at a glance to know what the sales people have done. I'm going to clear the filter. You want the sales per region? Let's pick Atlantic. The total sales in Atlantic is 156,800. So it will change as you change your filters. So that's the, another nice formula to use. And one other thing we can do is we can we can sort this and subtotal. So if we want we want to sort if we want to sub subtotal by salesperson, if we click on this salesperson, we can sort A to Z and then we can apply subtotal. Yeah. And then we can we can apply subtotals by person. We can put this on a pivot to see the sum per region. To do a pivot, if you select the data you want for the pivot, you can go to the insert and then click on pivot table. So because you selected your table, that is the range there, then you can put the pivot on a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. I want to put it on this particular one and it will ask you for the location. I just want to put it beside the data and that is okay. And that's your pivot table. On the pivot, pivot is like a summary of your data. So you can sort this by source person. So you can say, I want my source person on this side. And I want their sales. I want this, the sum of their sales on this side. So what gives you is the sum of the sales people. You can also have sales per region. For instance, you can say, okay, I want to region. So I want to see how much you have sold per region. So you have in Atlantic, this is Benson, sold 18,700. And in Pacific, Benson sold 22,500. You can, you can change the look of your pivot. by going to pivot table options. So you can go to the display. If you click on the classic pivot table layout, it just makes it wider and then you can see the pivot clearly. So you have Atlantic, you have all uh, dancing, 18,700. What you can also do with a pivot, for instance, you want to know what is the makeup of this 18,700 for benzene. If you double click it, it opens the sales for benzene. And then you can see benzene, it puts it on a different shape. Mm. Okay. So you can always drill down into your pivot to see the different elements of it. If you click on your pivot, you want to change this pivot. You go to the pivot table tools, and then you click your field list, and it comes up with the field list by the side. If, for instance, you, you, you just want the product, you don't want the salesperson, you want the product, or move the product here, and then you see sales per product. So you want product sold in a different region. So we move region here. So you can see what has been sold 
per region. One other thing we can do with the pivot is we can also put the pivot on a chart. We can use a chart as well. For instance, if you are doing a presentation. So we have the pivot table tools. If you look at the pivot table tools, there is a pivot chart. Where is the pivot chart? Let's Yeah, pivot chart here. So we can insert a pivot chart and you can pick any type of pivot you want. Let's pick a column one for instance. Or a line. You can use a column one. And this is the pivot. That's the pivot. You can change its pivot. This pivot is the bit. So we can change it to different sides. Let's change it to this. So you can use you can do different pivots. You are pivot charts. You can use all the line one. You can change the color. Thank you for mm -hmm. I'm going to delete this piece of for a minute. Mm -hmm. Something we can also use. I want to make this video. We can use something called, we can insert a slicer for the pivot. If you click on this, what it does is, I want to slice this pivot by salesperson. And then I have a salesperson pivot. And what this does is, you can, it serves like a filter for your, for your pivot. So if you want to select just one person, so this is Selby Total. If you want to see Park, you just click on Park and it changes it to Park. I'm going to unclick Selby. If you want to see two people, you can control and click someone else. Then you have two people that you can see on the pivot. So the slicer is used to, you know, just to filter the pivot. So instead of using a pivot, instead of using this to filter, you can also use this to filter. Then you can use the slicer as well to filter. Let's just do this for a minute. Okay. Let me see what else we need to cover. Okay. Okay. Before jumping to pivots, I think I should have done like a bar chart. Then. So I'm just going to go to bar charts. We can use different charts to analyze uh, our data, especially for presentation purposes. And what we need to do is insert. So we can use any of these charts. Let's look at a line chart, for instance, or a pie. Thank you. 
I'm just going to delete this and do it again. Mm -hmm. So, now to get it first. Then insert. Let's look at the line chart. I think it's a lot of getting for this. Um, So I've used a smaller data for the for the chart. I'm just gonna undo that so I can stop you chewing. So to insert a chart, you select your data, go to insert, pick the chart you want. We can use this, which is the bar chart, and what is done is it has a group the data according to the different areas. And then it colors the month separately. We can change the color. We can change the chart type. Type. We can change the color selection. If we don't want match, for instance, we can unselect match. And then we only have go. Let's unselect it. So January, February, apply. And then we only have January and February figures. We can change the color of this bars. So if you click on here, if you go to color, you can pick another color scheme depending on the preset colors. If we need to change the categories, for instance, for the areas, you can just unselect what you, you don't want. So we only want north, south, east, and west. Then we apply, and then it changes to just north, south, east, and west. We can change the type of both pivots. If we change it for, to line, then we have this. We can change it to this type of chart, which is another form of line chart. We can change it to a pie chart. And you can pick different types. So once you pick the main chart, then Take a different type and you can change it to this. So you can, you know, change it the way you want it. You can change it to a type with it, with the numbers in it or percentages. So that has a percentage. That has the name and the percentage. So that's just so using pies and charts. I'm just going to go back. I think I've left my. Okay, filters. Applying filters to spreadsheets helps to sort. If you want to apply filters, you select the cell you want to apply the filter to. You go to data, 
and you apply the filter. If you want to take off this filter, you click on the filter again, and that takes it off. If you need to sort, you can sort. If, if you recognize it as a number, it will give you the option to sort from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. You can filter by color. So if you apply color to this part, if you want to filter, we can filter by color and, and just say we don't want the ones without the color. So only the ones colored will come out. We can apply number filters. I'm going to clear this filter. These are numbers. So you want to apply a number filter. You want to filter, you want any number. I want any number greater than 50. OK. And we give more numbers greater than 50. You want to filter, and you want, I want a number between, I want a number between 50 and 70. OK. And then it gives you only the numbers between 50 and 70. So you can use any of these options to filter. I want a number less than 50. There's no number less than 50. Let's use another one. Less than 80. And it gives us numbers less than 80. You want to filter anything above average. And it gives you everything above the average on this worksheet. So you can use the filter for different things. And if you want to clear the filter, all you need to do is clear filter from regular price. And you clear the filter. On the branch, you can also apply, you can filter A to Z. You can sort by color, if you have color there. You can use text filters. So I want only the branch Pungo. And then it only brings out Pungo. Another way of doing that is, I'm going to clear the filter. If you click on the filter, if you do a search, if you start with P, it automatically brings you things that start with P. And it's only Pungo. So you have that. And on touch filters as well, you can you can use the number of options to filter. So you can have you want something that contains nine, for instance. And then it brings out text to nine. So that's the only one that contains nine. So you can use filters. You can have a custom filter. You can say it contains nine, or or, or begin with P. So let's see. Okay. So it brought out Pungo and Sector Nine. So Sector Nine contains nine, and P Pungo some Start with P. So you can play around with these filters. And if you don't want this filter anymore, all you need to do is clear the filter, and that filter goes. There's another shortcut for filter on this side. If you click this button, you have all the sorts. You have the filter. You, have, you can clear your filter from there. And before we finish, the basic Excel. I'll just there are a couple of shortcuts, shortcut keys that we use for Excel. So, for instance, if you want to open a new a new workbook, if you click on Control and O, that would open a new workbook for us, or open your your folder. So you can actually open a new workbook or folder. If you want to copy, it's Control C. So I want to copy Note, Control C. If you want to paste, Control V with paste. There's an option of 
when you want to look for a particular product and you want to replace it. So for instance, this company has changed their BMX. They've changed BMX, the name of their BMX, to BNT, for instance. Instead of changing it one by one, you can what you can do, you can do a find. So if you do control F, what I want to do is I want to find all the BMX. BMX on this file. And I want to replace it because BMX, our BMX is now called BMT. BMT. I want to replace it with BMT. So I will click replace all. And what happens is it's replaced all the BMS with BMT. And it told me that it's made several replacements. So this can be quite good if you need to replace, for instance, if you have a spreadsheet for March and you're in April and you want to replace all the March with April, you can use that. So you can do a control find, which is control F. So our shortcut keys. So it's always control, control button. So control F will find it. I'm going to drag this control down. Control P will paste. Control C would copy. Control X will cut. The difference between cut and copy. So if I want to copy, I do Control C and I place it here, Control V. If I want to cut, if I do Control X, once I place it here, it will remove it, it will cut it entirely from where I picked it from and put it in a new place. So that's the main difference between cut and and copy. Oh, control V is paste, sorry, it's not control P. Control V is paste. Oh. What I'll do is I will look for all the shortcut keys and, and send it as a message. Is that is there any other thing you want me to cover before we end this session? I do apologize, I've mixed and mashed it. But if you want me to cover anything specifically before we end this session, if you can send me a message, please. Okay. If there's anything you want me to touch before I finish, please let me know. I'm just going to delete this. Okay. okay. For this data, I'm looking at the data and I want to find duplicates on this data because I, I want to know if Lee has appeared in more than one place. I'm just going to... There's something called conditional formatting here that you can use to put rules on this pressure. So I want to know if Lee has a appeared in more than one place. I can say highlight duplicate values. Everything is highlighted because they all appear in more than one place. So light fuel red. Okay. Let me just so uh, let me make one. I'm just going to make this uh, unique so you can see the difference. So Lee is the only one 
that's only I've kept one of this fresh Excel and the other highlighted to show me that these are duplicates. And I want to clear, I can also clear this rule. I don't want this rule anymore. I'll say clear rules from selected cell or from the entire workshare. So conditional formatting, you can use it for different aspects. You can make a new rule. So you can say format only cells. For instance, I want I want to let me select this this. I'm just gonna close this. No show. Okay, I want I want to make a new rule. What I want is I want I want to format cell based on their values. So I want to say format the cell. Format is to color scale. Format only cells that contain cells value between I want cells value between 60 and 80. And the formatting I want is I want you to fill it, color it blue. Okay. And okay. So any cell between 50 and 80 will be colored blue because I've applied a conditional formatting on it. So I won't take too much of our time. If you have anything you want me to cover, let me know. If you have any specific question, let me know. I think I've I've covered a lot of the basics. I didn't make it too basic so that you don't I know a lot of us know how to use Excel. But it's just to cover some bits and bobs. So for the next session we're gonna do we're gonna cover formulas in depth. It's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of formulas for the next one. And then we're gonna go over the pivot again. We're gonna do V lookups on the next session. So it's, the next session is gonna be more advanced than this. We're gonna cover intermediate topics. So charts, we're gonna do charts more, we're gonna do logical functions. We're going to do headers and footers. We're going to do conditioning, more conditioning for formatting in the next session. So let me know what you want me to cover then. We'll take it from there. Thanks a lot, everyone. I hope this has been useful. Please put your comments and let me know what we can do better. Thank you.